Hello, my name is Hollis McGee, and I, along with my wife, have been involved in the homeless ministry for about six years now. Hey, this is a short video to help people who live inside to better understand those who live outside, to share with you some of the challenges and the blessings that they enjoy. are you about wanting to get off of it? I'm serious. You want to get off that alcohol? Yes. Today? Yes. Okay. You willing to go to Bethel and live by their rules? Yes. Even if they make you mad? Yes. You're not going to get mad? No. Okay. Praise God, Robert. We'll, we'll call and see. How many times have I made you mad? <laughs> <laughs> our friends, our neighbors who live outside are always looking for us. They have they have their eye on us, looking out to see when we're going to come and when we're going to be there and what, what I've cooked or what somebody else has cooked, like our brother here who loved chicken and dumplings, and he called me the chicken and dumpling man if, if I'm not mixing him up with someone else. And the, these other brothers, like Brother Jones here, who is just... Um, unique beyond description. I once was telling a, a joke about Muhammad Ali telling a stewardess he he didn't need a seatbelt, and he said I was on that flight. And then our buddy Hobo. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I thought I was pretty much see more pretty than me. I'm looking for Joe Frazier. You see Joe Frazier? To tell Joe Frazier they were dreaming he beat me. He better wake up with a project. So what is the best thing that somebody who's not homeless can do for someone who is? How can someone that, that's not homeless best help the homeless? If, if, if they pulled up and gave me a cold bottle of water and shook my hand off a womb and gave me a hug, said, I love you in my heart, that's a lot to me. They mean that in their heart. And yeah, people do that. Yeah. What's my favorite screen? Does anyone ask you if they loved you today? And they say no, look up and say they didn't hear you, Father. This is like your shoes. Somebody showed up my shoes and said, man, you need some shoes. Give me some shoes, Father. Mother's shoes, my mildew. Man, you gotta get out of some shoes. And give me these. I dress the way I want to dress. And I tell everybody. When you was born, God gave you a neck. If you don't like the way I look, turn your head. <laughs> All right, Hobo, we know how you are. I don't care. So let me That's ask this question. Hobo. What about flying a sign? Is if, if you were in a car and you wanted to do something that really helped somebody, would you give the person flying a sign money? This is what I would do. I would ask him a question. I said, uh, do you want to eat or do you want to drink? You say, oh, I need a shot thing. I know you're lying here. Hey, go, I'll mumble. Hey, 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 it's $20. I'll we'll get you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I would. That's love. It, do you think I'm truthful when I tell people, when they ask me as somebody that comes and works with a homeless, I tell them almost never should you give somebody money <laughs> because food. they're not going to use it you for, for what truth. something you're good. Truth. You're That's truth. true. And y'all are guys that have fly, flown signs and still do it. Yeah. So. You should give them food or clothes yeah. or stuff like that. Yeah. On the street, we have our own version of a complete makeover. We, we love trying to help people who have enough struggles in other areas to feel better about where they are and who they are. Because they experience heartache and struggles just like you and I do. And along with those heartaches and struggles comes joy, just like my friend Wilma here. Just people like you and me. 
They're our neighbors. Hey, Phil, thank you for talking to me. Would you just tell, like, in a minute who you are and what you know about people that are living outside? Yeah. My name is Phil Wells. I'm the missions pastor at Bucare Baptist Church in the French Quarter. And our primary outreach in our neighborhood is with the homeless. And this church has been doing that for at least, let's see, 20, 22 years consistently. And um, I've been here in the city for four years doing that with this church. What, if you wanted to tell people that don't know homeless just see them maybe as somebody that's blocking their path Mm -hmm. what would you tell them the the most important thing you could tell them about the people that live outside if you have somebody that's outside of your house that's always there i would encourage you to build a relationship with them i know that's awkward i know people are in your bubble or possibly on your private property but the best thing you can do for another human being is look them in the eye and ask them their name because that affirms who they are as a person that affirms their humanity and as believers that also affirms who they are they are created in the image of god they are god's image bearers you want to know what the people that live outside are like they're a lot like me and you and our neighbors. In fact, they are our neighbor. And our neighbor, just like us, has some things about them that are attractive and some things that aren't so attractive. Reminds me of me. Really, it there there's no neat hole to fit the a description of the homeless uh, community. That they are made up of people who have different struggles and challenges, people who have great talent, people who have great intellect, just like any other group of people. If, if there were one thing that really stands out among the homeless, I would say that it's a combination of mental health issues and substance abuse issues. But it's kind of hard to put your finger on where which one came first was it the the substance abuse or the mental issue or vice versa but they're people that want to know that their lives matter they want to be loved just like us this is what we can do best for them is to respect them as fellow human beings oscar spot okay well those guys are something <laughs> Oscar was given to me and he wanted to go down to the pound and get a dog, so I took him down there. Got him a dog. <laughs> okay. Well, Oscar and Spot got a good uh, good place to ride, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The population of the people living outside certainly changes on a regular basis, but there are also quite a few people that we've established long term relationships with. And we just look to try to find simple ways to meet practical needs, whether it's getting getting haircuts or food or clothes or helping with manicures or just uh, putting an arm around somebody and letting them know that you truly care and you know that they're there. They've got very practical needs. Sometimes we help with, with animals. NOLA. I work as the director of administration and I come to the place that we are right now, Duncan Plaza. Uh, it's a park that's across the street for, from the New Orleans City Hall. Um, I've been out here about a year and a half and I've noticed a lot. I, In the beginning, when I pulled up here for the first time, I couldn't see what was going on. Uh, I just saw a pretty park. I saw a few people just sitting around and it didn't look like much was happening here. But then after being here for a year and a half, it's like, there, it's like a, to me, there's a world out here that the average person going to the nine to five and zooming past doesn't see. Um, I have met a lot of what I consider to be friends, um, learning their life stories, uh, being able to pray with them. 
and they pray with me too, you know. Uh, we've made a lot of relationships out here. Uh, we Sometimes we have a lot of food to give and sometimes we don't. But while we're out here praying and learning together, it's really, really touching each week. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do during the week to come out here because honestly, in the beginning, I will admit I came out here in the early times, I was a little bit depressed myself. But through hearing other people's stories and just praying together and, and growing together, like I feel like we're, we've all overcome a lot together. So, so we're growing together out here. Yes, I feel that. We don't we just come out here to give something away. We take blessings back, don't we? No, I feel like uh, this is God's corner. Yeah. Wonderful place Amen. to be. If you had to, to say one thing that people that know nothing about homeless or, or have limited knowledge might benefit by learning, what, what might that be? Well, the rule of thumb for me, because there's so much to know, I think what helps is trying to be empathetic. And I had a really good friend out here to tell me, what if you lost everything and you were going camping and you had to just sit on that patch of grass and survive? What would you need? And I think that that drove a lot of my thinking on what to buy, what to do. Because if you went by the list, the, the, the need is great. But if you think about it from the perspective of what would you need if you were out here, then it totally changes your thought process. Thank you so much, Tanisha. Thank you. Thank you for what you do out here. Panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Russell, are you aware that from now on you're going to need to call Jacob, Dr. Jacob? What are your thoughts about that? Only if he heals me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Claudel, continuing, w would you mind sharing what you think people that are not on the street could do to help homeless? How could they best encourage them and help them? I think they can help by accepting people for who they are. They can embrace it. Even though that you may not understand it or want anything to do with it, but if you would embrace it. So how how would I, if I'm drive, if you're sitting on the corner up here at Claiborne and this street and I pull up to that corner. That's my only interaction with you. How can I embrace who you are in that 10 seconds or 20 seconds that I have? How might they do that? Uh, just just a, a, a warm smile. 
if you want to know your neighbors who live outside, then you've got to take a risk and you've got to go out and visit with them. Everything you encounter won't be pleasant, but you will meet wonderful people and you will enjoy great conversation. You will also have some very strange conversations, just like we would if you and I were visiting. They're just people. Go out and meet your neighbors. Marcus, Marcus is going to show us the only true and proper way to put on a Susan Stedman right. knit scarf. So roll it, Marcus. All right, here we go. You're in front of the... These are for really cold days. Okay. You're in front of the neck and you bring one flap. Hang on, I'm going to have to You go in front of the neck and you bring one flap around and then you bring the other flap around and you cross them. I changed the words, man.
especially with clothes, be sure that if you donate used clothes that it's not like worn out stuff. Gently used is a very, very, very uh, good term to use because stained socks, used underwear, um, those things, just, just especially with clothes because that's a, that's a pet peeve for those of us that do clothes. Pete is one of them. Uh, when Jesus was not the God and guest to be, uh, he knew it was the body time to die. He was praying for his father. And Peter walked up and said, I would never betray you. He, he was down to everybody else, you know, uh, Judas the carrier, you know, Judas and all that. He looked at Peter and said, really? You never betrayed me? He said, before the cock crowed, you would bet betray me three times. And, and Peter went up crying and said, betray me. He's perfect, and Peter thought he was perfect. He's the only human being, too.